Morning, everybody. Let's see, my music feels like it's a little bit loud today. I think I got it, okay. Good morning, everyone, how are you? All right, let's go ahead and scroll up and see who we have here. Question of the day today is, if you could eat as much as you want of one food without consequences, what would it be? For me, I think it would probably be some sort of dessert and we have been live for, oh, I don't know, 15 seconds and already for Paul. Paul, you're, you have a fear of missing out? Paul, that was going on? Good morning. All the paint is dry. You're good. Just don't drink my coffee. <laughs> He's like, I don't know, mom. You got a lot of a lot of stuff on here today. All right, there you go. Is that comfy? Is that better? All right. So yes, question of the day today is: If you could eat as much uh, as you want of one food without consequences, what would it be? And mine would definitely be a dessert of some sort because sugar, as addicting as it is, is delicious. All right, let's see. Emily, good morning. Linda, good morning. Parmesan cheese, I like it. Uh, let's see, Cece, good morning. Chocolate and pot, wait. Chocolate and pasta mixed together or separate? Let's see, Kara, good morning. She says, question today, mac and cheese. Lobster, Yana. You know, it's so funny. I grew up a fisherman's daughter, but I have never had lobster. That's that's not drinking water, buddy. That's not, that's not for drinking. We're gonna put that over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He's looking at me like, well, fine. Uh, let's see. Kristen, good morning. Chocolate. Yep. Love it, Angela. Let's see. Question right now. I'm on an Ar Ar Arancini kick. Wait, what's Arancini? Or is it Arancini? Like pepperoncini. Let's see. Sherry, Kenny, good morning. Renee, good morning. Marcy, good morning. Let's see. Scroll down. Dumblins, love those since they since it seems like they are the only thing I don't seem to have issues with, with texture, the taste amazing. I do, I do love a good dumpling and they are delicious. Aaron, hello. Fish fry or sushi? See, I find it interesting. Like I love sugary stuff, but like, that's why I put food. I was gonna put dessert, cause in my head, I think dessert is the thing that I have to limit myself on. But like, y'all are going for the savory and I kinda, I'm feeling it. Hi, Callie. Let's see, blueberries all day, every day. What kinds of, like, Blueberries are like, I mean, they're good for you. I think you can eat as much of that as you want anyway. Are there consequences with eating like entire gallons of blueberries? I don't know, I've never tried. <laughs> Let's see, I mean, if it was like plums, I would get it. <laughs> Let's see, scroll down. Danielle says ice cream, yep, right there with you. Sherry says french fries, welcome back, Don. love it. Pork dumplings with noodles, oh, I lost it. I lost it, it scrolled down, hang on. Worked on those noodles in a broth. Ooh, that does sound good. Good morning, Gleechi. Angela says, oh, you just finished your Pablo honeybee. Oh, awesome, did you put, did you post it online? Did I see it already? I'll check, I'll check your Instagram after stream. Anything with sugar. Yeah, Megan, that's me. I have a weakness for it. Hi, Kelly. Let's see, Jennifer, eat big juicy greasy cheeseburgers with the works. That sounds amazing. Oh, you're just gonna stay here the whole time? Hmm? He's like, yes, please. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch. Make sure I'm gonna... Yeah, Paul time early. I know, right? He's like, hello. Can't narrow it down to just one. It would be lasagna for dinner, Nusa yogurt for breakfast. Is Nusa like the brand or is it a type of yogurt? And chocolate covered soft caramels for the dessert. Oh, Debbie, that does sound good. Hi, Celeste, how are you? Cece says, chocolate and pasta separate. Okay. I mean, I, I guess, you know, Will Ferrell does it on Elf, add a little sprinkles, a little maple syrup. It could be a thing. It's probably worth giving a chance at some point. Uh, Angela, good morning. Kareen, good morning. Let's see. Blueberries. Kelly says blueberries. Have crab and lobster. Crab and lobster crab is a little bit sweeter. Ah, okay, okay. Let's see. Dominique, good morning. Yeah, think of the forbidden. Yes, the the ones that we know we'll regret if we eat an entire bowl of cuff cuff ice cream. <laughs> right, Debbie? Absolutely, he does. Well, um, no big announcements today or anything. I did finish. I did finish the zebra page, so you can find that on my Etsy along with the Phoenix. I've started seeing some of the coloring pages come out, and you guys are doing a wonderful, amazing job for us today. Um, I did catch up. I didn't do any more lanterns, but I did catch up on the background page. So what we're going to work on today, we're using the, oh, Paul, you're getting hair all over my face. 
<laughs> we're gonna be using the Arteza watercolors again with the Arteza watercolor brushes. We got various sizes. Um, last night I was using the number eight round for a lot of the background. And then, and then uh, I used this number one round for in between the people. He made my paintbrush all warm because he was sitting on it. <laughs> Are you all done, bud? Or with yours cracked if you want out. Um, anyway, so like I said, I got to work on this, did the background. I did a lot of that black and the indigo that we played with um, before, and I just went over it quite a few times. And one of the other tricks that I did with it was um, if you have been, ooh, Snickers Blizzard. Ooh, I like the Reese's one. All things gluten, right, Renee? Oh, man, I tell you, like, I have been, there have been so many times this month, I've just been close to throwing in the towel on the, on the, on the whole gluten shebang. <laughs> Like, I'll take the week of miserableness and just get back. No, I'm kidding. Um, but anyway, so I alternated with the uh, black and the indigo on the pans, but then I also used the tube of watercolors. And it looks like I've got a little bit of crumbles here, and that's because the tube watercolors dried. Um, but uh, they're, I mean, they're watercolors, so you can just reactivate them. There's no reason for tossing it. Nusi yogurt is a brand name, and their lemon yogurt is like a lemon cloud. Ooh, that sounds good. Ooh, nice, Kim. That sounds like fun. Vacation or business? Or you don't have to say. It's none of my business. <laughs> um, I still don't have a swatch chart uh, out. I'm just kind of um, winging it. So let's just dive right in. I pulled up last time for references. What did I say? Lanterns in the sky, I think was the Google prompt that I gave myself. And I pulled up Google images for that. Yes, so lanterns in the sky. If you're kind of curious how this is gonna work, that is the prompt that I was using. And then if you just go to Google and pull up cheetah, pull up your Google images there. Obviously we're not copying anything exactly, but it's gonna give us uh, our color references that we need, which is why in Google Images, if you look at the lanterns in the sky, we may even make it a little bit darker on top of this larger lantern, but we're gonna work on the cheetah today and then we'll do the rest of the lanterns. Oh, right, I was saying, <laughs> I totally left off what I was saying about Barbara. Hi, Zoe. Um, but what I was gonna say is that I did a thing that, Bar that I learned on Barbara's channel um, and I'll do it again after we finish the cheetah, but I ironed the page. So obviously I put a lot of layers of watercolor on here and it's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot flatter than it was. And I think right now it's still a little warpy because this part has no paint and that part does. Like I can feel a clear difference on the uh, on the moon and everything else. And we're gonna be adding like little uh, white, white paint pen for the details and everything. Um, but when we're all done, we'll go ahead and um, iron it with the iron on a low setting and we'll flatten it. On a three-hour trip to see your sister. Oh, that's fun, Kim. Oh, and you're coming back tonight. Ooh, that's a long trip, but it'll be a good visit. Hi, Kareen. Wait, Kareen, did I already say hi? If not, you get a second hello. <laughs> All right, well, uh, if you were following along and you've got your Google uh, images up, like I said, I just Googled lanterns in the sky and cheetah, but go over to your cheetah, ta cheetah tab right now. That's what we're gonna be working on. So for our cheetah, we've got a lot of kind of light, warm browns. And again, with paints, like I don't really, I'm sure I have names for these particular pans somewhere, but I'm gonna be more describing the color. So if you're following along with um, watercolor pencils or watercolor paints, just kind of try and find what matches the best. And like I said, use those same reference Im images that I am, and because obviously what I see is gonna be different than what you see. So just do your best to match up your colors um, with the cheetahs. So, we're gonna wanna work around, we're gonna go across the entire cheetah with probably one color to start, or maybe two colors, but we're gonna be going around all of the lanterns because the lanterns are gonna be their own thing. And like I said, I think I'm gonna make this a little bit darker up here, but we'll do that when we go back to the larger ones. But for now, today, we're gonna work on the cheetah. And let's start with, I'm thinking, oh, I gotta get my cup of water back. I moved it so Paul wouldn't break it. <laughs> um, let's see. We're gonna start with the number eight, just because I wanna be able to work around the lanterns. And we've got some nice colors here. I don't have any of these wetted yet, so it's okay. Um, we'll probably use this one here. And these are in the same order when I bought it. So, God, it's getting messy with that indigo. Um, so if yours are in the same order of mine, you might be able to follow a little bit better. But I like this color here and this one, and of course that one. I don't know how much we'll use that one. Um, let's see, do I still have my white 
watercolor out. I thought I had my white watercolor out from last time, but I think I might have put that away. So um, instead of using white, because it doesn't come in this set anyway, I want to go ahead and just thin it out how I need it to be, because obviously we have the white undertone from the page anyway. Oh, wait, is that it? Oh, that's my black. Well, that's okay, because we'll need that out anyway. Um, but we are just going to, for the lighter areas, we are just going to thin out the color a little bit more. So looking at the images, we're going to start by getting, say, morning to enjoy the deck. Roofing is complete. Awesome, Yana. That looks amazing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with this one here. It's like an ochre a little bit. Let's see. There are Paul cat hairs everywhere. Okay, so putting this on the palette here, it's looking... I think we're picking up a little bit of color from behind, and I think there might have been a little bit of indigo left on my brush, so it's looking a little bit more yellow. Or not yellow, um, like it's got a little bit of blue or green in it. So let's grab, let's go ahead and grab this yellow over here. And let's mix that in. Let's grab a bit more of this ochre. That's not bad. Let's get a little bit of this brown over here. This is like a definitely a warm brown. Okay, I think we're getting closer to what we want here, but we're going to thin this out a lot. Let's see. Let's add what's this one. Let's see that one's. Hang on. We need to see which one is the black here. Minty, good morning. Yes, it's Wednesday. Okay, so that one there is the black. And then this one here. That's like a that's like a real dark like a burnt umber. And in fact, I think I want to take a little bit of that in. That's closer. It's like I'll know the color when I when I see it. I just haven't seen. Yeah, we're gonna get a little bit of this lighter color. Okay, I think that's pretty close to what I want. Get just a little bit. I would call this one like a Naples yellow, if I was labeling these anything. Just trying to find the right mix. And the hard part about like mixing more and more is that uh, it's going to be harder to get that color again. Okay, so we're going to add quite a bit of water to this and we're going to, oh, I dropped some on his head. Okay, well, I guess we're going to start moving on him then. All right, so I'm going to draw my brush because that's still almost too much. But it starts to soak into the paper and it's hard to go back once you put it down. So let's see, we'll go ahead and get the ears. Make sure you have your heat gun close by because like I said, when this paper is not meant to hold this much watercolor, let's see. We're gonna do it across the top of his nose. But this area here is going to be lighter. So we're gonna dry the brush, kind of drag that out just a bit. Can everybody hear me okay? I know I'm talking a little, oh, zoom, zoom, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sort of like, in the zone already. And it will dry lighter. It'll dry lighter than it uh, looks directly on the page. Oh, I covered a lantern. Well, thankfully it's, thankfully it's yellow and the lantern will be yellow. So I don't think it's detrimental. I gotta remember to go around the lantern. So we're just doing this one color right now. Let's see, I think it's safe to do these arms in the yellow. His chest, tummy, and neck area, under the neck area, are probably gonna be the lightest areas. So we're just adding that kind of base color right now, and then we'll add more on top. But before we add our second layer of color, we'll go ahead and use the heat gun as well. And then uh, before we go today, the last thing that we do today, will I'll break out the iron. Uh, let's see, I know I'm missing some stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, that's no, that's fair. I was kind of like in the zone as long as the whole thing is in here. And I'll be perfectly honest with you guys. Um, for I've got something inner ear going on. And when I talk, my ears ring. <laughs> so if you hear me suddenly talking quieter, it's just because I'm like, wow, that's annoying. I did go to the doctor for it. And um, she thinks it's just I'm just still getting over whatever we all had. And so she's like, if it's still ringing in a week, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so if it's still ringing in a week, I get to go to an ENT. But in the meantime, we're just 
we're just muddling through. I don't, you know, she took a look in my ear. Everything looks fine. But it is what it is. Anyway, so that's it. <laughs> Hi, welcome, Jet Girl. Uh, we are using the Arteza watercolors. Oh, that might have been a little bit heavy. But I was, oh, and I'm covering up lanterns again. My goodness, thank you, Yellow. Thank you, Renee. Um, but uh, yeah, during Angela's stream last night, I was working on the background of this page. Sarah Renee Clark actually live streamed yesterday as well. Oh my gosh, I keep going over lanterns. Here I am telling you guys, oh, make sure you go around your lanterns. And then I don't go around my lanterns. <laughs> I did make another reel yesterday though. It showed the reality of like when I'm filming, whether it's a reel or for YouTube, um, I have to sit further back so that my head isn't filling up the page. But in reality, I'm usually like sitting two inches from the page. Okay, we're officially out of that color. So I'm gonna have to blend that color again. Like when I was doing these little guys here. You know, actually before we do that, let's go ahead and dry in between. Right, Kim? I honestly, that had never crossed my mind, like at all. And I did it last night and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, how'd that go, Minty? We'll see, and it's not perfectly flat, but heck, it did a heck of a job. And I did try to do it on an old page um, and it didn't quite do it as well. I think ironing after it's freshly done is, is quite a bit more helpful. All right, we're gonna dry this completely real quick and then we're gonna do the rest of the belly and we're gonna do the legs. There's also baby cheetahs on this Google page that I'm looking at and oh my gosh, they're so cute. Oh really? How are you feeling about that? I've been talking with some friends lately who are, you know, we all kind of have you reach a certain age and I feel like there's a lot of us that have kind of chronic issues and we were lamenting just doctors and whether or not they can help and suggestions and everything. So I know sometimes you can go to an appointment and they're like, well, you got to do this now. And you're like, okay, then. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Butterfly. Yeah, it was a sudden thing. I guess she was trying it for YouTube shorts. Um, and I felt silly because there were people in chat that were asking what book she was doing. And of course she's got, you know, a ton of people in chat, so she can't answer everyone. But I recognized the page and it was a Hannah Carlson. It was the one that I colored to kind of look like, sorry, this, it's really wet, I'm drying it. It was the one I kind of colored to look like uh, Miss Frizzle. And that one is in um, Spirit Animals. But when she pulled out the book, she was actually using grains of gold. Now I don't have grains of gold, and am I, the fact that that's in it is Grains of Gold kind of a compilation book for those of you that have it, because I haven't seen it. So she pulled it out. I was like, you know, all sheepish because I was like, oh, I was telling everyone it was Spirit Animals, which I do know it's in there, but that wasn't the book that she was using. Um, but apparently she was working on it for um, an upcoming video that she was doing. All right, there we go. That's all dry. But yeah, that's where she was. All right, so let's go ahead and try and recreate that a little bit. We're gonna get that ochre. I might be able to get it a little bit easier. I know I went back and forth a lot, but that was because I had, oh, see, that's really yellow. We're going to get some of that umber. Okay, let's get some more of that ochre. Let's see. That's getting closer. I think we just really need to water it down. It's a bit more yellow, it's just a bit more. I think that's gonna be darker, but I think it's okay. Let's see, for the belly, the belly's pretty consistent. It's mostly the chest and under the chin that. Oh, I didn't even think about that, Kenny. That's probably right. Yeah, I'll try drying the back. Right, Minty? I know, you get to the point where you're just like, can I just have some answers, please? That would be wonderful. Oh, that's actually pretty close. Let's have a little bit more to the yellow here. I'm actually really happy with that. All right, let's water it down quite a bit. Okay, and let's see, let's do, we're gonna clean our brush because that was way too much to begin with. It's a little different, but it's not too bad. I think we got it really close. So let's finish adding our base color to the legs. Do a little bit more water. 
I mean, because you can get watercolors looking really deep. It's just a matter of how much you're thinning it out. Watching Dee Dee this morning. She's always so happy. I love it. And I'm totally going over these lamps. I'm going to have to... I think when it'll dry, it won't be as bad. I didn't want to go over all of them, but you know... Not all the lamps are going to be exactly the same brightness. Maybe some of them will be faded a little bit. <laughs> all right. So let's see. I'm going to add this here. Um, but yeah, kids start back at school tomorrow. We went and did the, you know, go tour the schools and all that good stuff. You know, I've seen it all before, but they still like to go and see their friends. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting transition for sure. Today's the last Wednesday where we'll have the kids at home, you know, till like fall break or Christmas break or whatever else uh, during streams. I'll probably leave the door open more so the cats can come and go as they please. But no, summer was just over way too quick. Hi, Leslie. Question today, ice cream. I love it. Yeah, Leslie, I thought I saw you in uh, in Sarah's stream last night. I was lurking in like three different streams. Sarah was on, Angela was on, and then uh, I was on Twitch for the uh, community over there as well. So I was like, I was lurking in all of them, all while doing this as well. <laughs> all right, let's try uh, let's try drying the back of it this time. Third day of school. Yeah, some of them started earlier this week. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, Angela. What is that? Watch somebody use Distress Inks on a curvy page. It was so smooth. Right, I know. I have never looked at Distress Inks all that much, but I've been thinking about it more and more. I put some on my wish list just so I keep going back and looking at it. There was this thing, I can't remember if I saw it on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, but what she did, is there were these plastic um, removable sheets that she used. And uh, she went ahead and put down the plastic sheet first, then used an X-Acto knife to cut around it, kind of like what we did with the washi tape. And then, um, then she did her distressed ink over it. And my gosh, the background was so smooth. Her blends were amazing. And uh, yeah, so I put some of that paper on there and uh, next time I uh, treat myself, I think it might be that. And I'm kicking myself too, because when the Hobby Lobby was having that um, massive like markdown when they were clearing a bunch of their stock out, oh my gosh, they had so many distressed, distressed inks on sale. I should have taken advantage, but I hadn't done it yet. Right, Zoe, I feel you on that one. Oh man, it's so many croissants. September 1st. Yeah, so when I lived up in the Pacific Northwest, they started in September, but that's also because they got out later. Okay. So for a lot of these pictures, we see a lot of darker color at the ridge with a little bit darker of a brown. Now, a lot of that darker color is because the black is like all their spots are kind of connecting. So I don't know that we'll go super dark, but I think we'll take advantage of this dark umber that we have and then fade it out to some lighter brown. Hi, Natalie, how are you? Ooh, that sounds yummy. Cinnamon buns and pistachio. This pistachio buns, really good gluten-free option. Oh, nice. Okay, so let's get a little bit of that burnt umber. I'm gonna pop it over here first. But I think that's a nice dark color. Let's go ahead and thin it out. Like I said, with watercolor, you can't exactly erase. So it's better to go lighter if you're a little nervous about a color and then add more as you go on. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that brush just a little bit because I know there's going to be a lot of pigment up in that. Uh, I'm going to move that and I'm going to slide this. Let's see. Coffee, you're getting shifted also because I need to turn this at a comfortable angle. Strong cheddar cheese. Oh yeah. We like, uh, although we're down, you know, down in the South here, we treat ourselves to the Tillamook cheese. That's one of our budget grocery list <laughs> splurges. <laughs> Start on June 23rd. Yes, yeah, so we start, uh, we started ours like end of May. Okay, so as you can see, that is a lot of water, a lot of pigment. So we're just gonna, that's one of the reasons why I clear the brush because I don't want it to be too much and I can control how much is in the brush and how much ends up on the paper. But yeah, so it's gonna be a transition. 
with school and everything else, but I think, I think they'll enjoy it. All right, so we're just using this dark umber. Definitely gonna make it a little bit darker by the time we're done with this first layer. Oh, Natalie, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's gotta be so stressful. Well, I, you know what? If she knows where her home is, she will probably find her way home. I'm sure. Our kitties, like, Paul hasn't ever escaped outside and Annie hasn't, but Isis got outside, has gotten outside a few times in the last, you know, 16 years we've had her. You know, just like she's, there was an open door and she wandered out, but honestly, she never went further than like the front step and just sat there and meowed. Like, she was a street cat. Like, she just showed up on our porch one day. That's how we got her. Um, but she, she'll just sit there and be like, no, I don't like this. Please let me in. And she just waits. <laughs> I mean, she's 16. She likes her bed. She likes her comfort. Oh, I like that, Minty. That's a good idea. Yeah, I hope... I hope she comes home quickly. But if it makes you feel any better, I um, have a relative whose cat went out and was missing for like, I don't know, months. Like three, two, three months. Anyway, turns out it was hanging out over at the neighbor's house. And, uh, and they got it back. So, you know, miracles do happen. All right. So let's get a little bit more of that umber now. Yeah, right. Like the eating of the, of the favorite things. I do like cookies. Like if there was one dessert, like mine would definitely be like sweet. So mine would be a sweet thing because I have a bit of a sweet tooth. So if I were to choose one, one sweet item, chocolate chip cookies are delicious for sure. I do like ice cream, but I don't know, cake, cake would be a good one. I do like cake. Can I just choose all the things, all the things with sugar? <laughs> oh, really, Kim? I love that. Yeah, we have uh, Sir Paul McCanny. He's got his... Uh, his own little emotes down here. Where did go? There you go, Sir Paul McCanny. Uh, the little black kitties are of Annie. But if you wanna see other pictures of them, I actually <laughs> created stickers of them uh, in the Etsy shop. So they just hang out and I love it because now everybody can have their own cat family. All right, so I just added a bit more pigment because I wanna get this line on the top of it. A little, oh, that's too dark, too dark. Uh, but it's still wet, so it's okay. We can spread it out. Whew. That was almost disastrous. We'd have to just create new new spots for this cheetah. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, thanks, Ronnie. And I had to go to work the next day, so I took her once I got back, found her up a neighbor's tree. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> They're like, I live in this tree now. Honestly, cats are just hilarious. Like, they can be, you know, aggravating as heck when they're getting into stuff, but that's the thing is like, they know what uh, what aggravates us. Paul, are you still in here? Oh, he is, he's sitting down at the front of the desk, just chilling. He, he, he likes to be part of the party. Couldn't have him up here right now anyway, because the paint. I mean, it's non-toxic, but still. <laughs> I don't want kitty, kitty paint paw prints all over the house. I actually had that happen once before I was doing um, a fluid art painting. And this is when we had our orange cat, Oliver. And I thought that I had all of the, because I would um, dry the paintings on my desk in my office, which at the time was in my bedroom. And um, I, uh, let's see, do I want to put some darkness? Let me put some here for sure. I'm trying to figure out where we want our darker colors. Um, I had a real big, it was like a, what was it? It was like a 20 inch by 20 inch size painting. So, I mean, it was pretty decent sized and I had to leave it flat on my desk to dry. Pretty sure I had all the cats out of there and I go out to the main part of the apartment to go do something and I hear this crashing and I come back and Oliver had jumped up on the painting, had paint all over. Amazingly, I was able to salvage the painting but needless to say, if you're familiar with fluid art uh, at all, there's a lot of paint sitting that can just fly everywhere because it's thinned out paint. And I was just like, oh no. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. You guys have foxes more often out there, don't you? There was a uh, video I was watching online of this woman who has like these eight fox kits that would like come to her house and she'd feed them sausage rolls. <laughs> I was like, oh, I want to feed a fox sausage roll. All right, so let's get a little bit of this ochre. It's pretty bright. I think we'll tone it down with just a little bit of, let's see, this is, let's grab this brown, whatever this one is. I like that. So we're gonna do a mix of brown and this ochre. So not a bright yellow, but not exactly a dark brown either. That's quite a bit of pigment, so we're gonna thin that out. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that sounds about right. Paul had the zoomies the other night and he was just tearing through the, through the whole house. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? All right, so we're gonna, ooh, you know what? Actually, I'm seeing this paper's kind of crimping. Let's dry our darker areas first. Uh, thanks, Don. We'll dry this and then we'll add the brown onto it. Now, as far as his spots, we probably will go ahead and yeah, paw prints and paints on fur, exactly. Just sleeps on the printer. Um, Annie is afraid of my printer. If I do anything with the printer, she's like slowly walking in here and just like looking at it like, what the heck? Yesterday I caught her, I had gotten a piece of paper out of the printer, so the printer had made noise and I caught her just sitting in front of it, like staring at it like, mom, it does things. Have you seen this? <laughs> right, yes, the zoomies. All right, so now we're gonna use some of that brown. We're gonna go over our darker umber that we used. And we're gonna fade this into the lighter color that we did the first time around. Okay, and then here as well. Bring that on down. And we're still gonna do a color here on the underside of the neck and the belly. But let's get this brown in first. I'm gonna try and remember to go around the lanterns this time. <laughs> I suppose maybe if I had done the lanterns first, but maybe it's a good thing because now going over them just a little bit, I can go ahead and, uh, you know, fix it when I go on top of it with the lantern colors. All right, so looking at the cheetah, we're gonna go ahead, bring that right about there. And like I said, I'm just looking at a collection of the cheetah pictures on Google. So I'm not looking at any one in particular. I'm just kind of getting a general view of them and going, okay, well, this is about where these colors go. This is about where these ones go. And we did do the background first. Oh, really? <laughs> that happy boy. <laughs> That's adorable. Okay. Bring that over here. We're definitely gonna make it a little bit darker on top. I will, I want it to be just a bit darker. We have these lanterns and we're gonna be doing some pencil over the top once we're completely done with the watercolor. And we may, if I like the look of it when we're done, oh, see I'm going over lanterns again. Um, we may add just a slight pencil glow uh, around the outside of them, but not a ton. That's the one thing about Kirby's, like I have a hard time using just pencil, pencils on his pages, just because the way that he draws, it's not a lot of like open and closed images. Like I feel like, I don't know, like it's not abstract by any means. He's just kind of loose with his style of drawing. So using a loose style of coloring for his stuff really works for it. Oh, thanks Kim. Yeah, yeah, so we're doing a watercolor base and it'll be mostly watercolor. The pencil is just gonna be more for like small little details and touch-ups. I was thinking that when we're all done, because like this area down here is pretty dark black, but the paper just cannot handle any more water for the background where I've already put paint. So I was thinking that if it's, if I want it darker when we're done, we might use a little bit of pastels on top of the watercolor. There's enough texture to it that I think it'll still hold, uh, that I think it'll still hold the pastels. We're just drying in between our layers here. 
And we'll definitely use the iron as well. I think that's gonna be really helpful. Aw, thanks, Angela. Yeah, I put some uh, on my on my coffee cup. <laughs> Have you seen the coloring roulette cards by Color Flare? And I think I remember her posting about them, but no, I haven't seen them yet. I kind of do like my own coloring roulette in the sense that if I don't know where I want to go with a color palette, I tend to just uh, I grab the uh, the color cube cards and I just grab those ones. Oh no, Kenny. Gosh, aren't allergies just fun? All right, so I'm getting that kind of umber color that's next to the black and we're gonna do this top part much darker. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the people yet because they're so small. I think an idea that I kind of had, and I don't know if that'll work because we're not doing it the same way, uh, like the cheetah the same way, but maybe for them where I do kind of like a little bit of glow on the top of them and then cast a shadow, cast a shadow down to the rest of them. So we're not looking at a ton of detail for the people, but they'll have a glow from the lanterns. But I feel like if I'm gonna do a glow on the people, then I should probably do a glow on the cheetahs. So I, I don't know if that one will work. I don't know that we'll get to the people today. Like I suspect us to do one more stream of this page. So what I could do before our third stream of this is I can take a picture of our progress with my iPad and then I'll go ahead and kind of toy around with some color choices. A lot of times if I'm stuck, um, that's what I'll do is I'll pull it into the iPad and then I will just test things out and be like, okay, does this work? Does this work? That kind of thing. Oh, I love it, Dominique. So the seashell sticker, are you talking about the seashell sticker, the one with the octopus? Hi, Steve. You have sticker anxiety? <laughs> Minty, you know what you would probably love? Those reusable sticker books. Oh, fun, Leslie. If you if you like those reusable uh, sticker one or sticker books, they're great. Kara, thank you. Get some hypes in chat for Kara! Exclamation point hype. You know, it's so funny when I was starting stream this morning, I didn't mean to start so close, like to when the timer was gonna be up because like I hit it on OBS to go live, but I forgot to hit the go live on uh, the dashboard. So it's like, I was like, all right, five minutes till we're doing good. Went and used the restroom, came back. I never went live. I'm like, oh, my bad. <laughs> all right, we're getting a little bit more of this umber. I'm gonna clean my brush. Okay, snag just a little bit and we're gonna go in with some of these darker areas. I don't foresee myself using a ton of like blues or greens to make the shadow color. Although I tell you, I saw a video, um, probably on Instagram or wherever else, of an undercoat of blue for this guy who was uh, painting an apple. And I was just like, huh, I really like that. Like he used the blue for the shadow but he did the blue first and then did the red. So I think next time we get the opportunity to like watercolor some fruit or whatever, I wanna do that kind of like undercoating to it. Hi, Connie, how are you? All right, so we're gonna use a little bit of that here. Basically where Kirby marked his shadows is where I'm kind of marking or where I'm using the umber. Now I'm trying really hard not to go over these lanterns, especially since I'm using this umber now. And then let's see, I'm gonna use it here on these shadow areas. Trying to keep things consistent. You can see he's clearly darkened up these particular legs. Just wanna get that umber added there. Went over the foot a little bit, that's okay. So I have a sticker of the octopus itself, but not the shell, not the shell. I actually just restocked uh, the octopus and it's, uh, it's by itself, but yeah. So I have the octopus, just not the shell on there. I have other fairy house, uh, well actually not, I used to have more fairy house stickers, but I sold out of those ones. 
I think there might be one or two left of the uh, hollow, the holographic mushroom fairy house. And I do have, a, have some mushroom teapots, but it's not the mushroom teapot fairy house. Actually just finished reorganizing the whole kind of sticker, sticker stock uh, over here on a shelf. All right, so let's get that ochre. Let's get a little bit of a more reddish brown. Ooh, that's nice. Let's get just a tad bit of that umber to mix in with it. Yeah, I like that. Let's get some more though, because we're gonna be doing the whole body here and I wanna make sure that we don't have to mix colors mid body. Just a little bit, a bit of the red. There we go, I like that. Okay, let's see. Wait, Ev. Just popping in for a minute, I'm sick and only a, oh, oh, Ev, I hope you feel better soon. I'm so sorry, being sick is no fun. Pray for a speedy recovery. Okay, so let's see, let's go ahead. I'm gonna empty that brush real quick because I want to there we go, that's better. Having the brush saturate, it holds a lot of pigment, which is great about these, these brushes, but when I'm doing something so specific, I like to not have the brush fully saturated. Yeah, being sick is no fun. Rest up, lots of sleep. I'm also going over those kind of burnt umber areas with that real dark brown. And then we'll go in with another lighter cheetah color as well. There we go. A little bit more. Let's see, let's do here the front part. And that's a lot of pigments. So we wanna spread that out. If you got too much, you can quickly just dry your brush on your towel. Um, like I said last time, I just keep some, uh, I got like an old towel that I cut up and I just keep those close. But if you feel like you've got too much pigment, while it's wet, you can quickly dry your brush. That will get rid of a lot of the other pigment and then you can kind of absorb some of that or move it around a little bit more if you need to. Anything and everything. <laughs> there you go, Connie. I love it. Okay, let's do, let's see. Let's get a little bit more of this while we have this color. And again, it will dry lighter than it looks. Just try to soften those edges before it dries. There we go. It's coming along, I like it. Oh, thanks, Dominique. I'm gonna get this really light kind of yellow color here and we're gonna thin it out quite a bit. That's one of the things, like I said, that I like about Kirby with watercolors is you really can just be kind of fast and loose with it. All right, so this is more yellow than we've used, but I think, yeah, I think that's what we need. It's just really thinned out, so it's not super vibrant. Let's see, let's go ahead for the underbelly. Let's get a little bit of this color over here. How, ooh, that's really bright. That's really bright. Um, let's tone it down with just a little bit of umber. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm mixing here. It's this color over here. So we're just gonna tone it down a little bit, make sure that it's pretty thinned. Okay, my brush is pretty soaked though, so nice and thinned, and then we're gonna run it along the bottom here. Now, if you still feel like that's too much, you can pick a little bit up. And remember, it's gonna dry lighter than it is. 
Okay, add a little bit more water. Let's see, for the mouth, let's look at the images here. The mouth is still pretty light. Go ahead, we'll use a little bit of that yellow. I think that'll stand out more as like a lighter color when we get just a little bit darker because I think I wanna go in with at least one more layer of color for the cheetah. But let's go ahead and dry that real quick. But yeah, I struggle with using pencil with his pages. Watercolor is just always my best friend when it comes to his stuff. So we're just gonna get him dried real quick. Underside a little bit. And like you can see on the back page, well, I can see, I don't know if you guys can, like how wrinkled the back page is. So we'll definitely be ironing this when we're all done. I really want him to have some high contrast. Now, looking at all of the cheetah pictures on the web, obviously some are more edited than others. You know, some are in you know, sunset, so it's kind of orangey. Um, so I think I want to darken up with a little bit more of a reddish brown along the top of the head, kind of here, and then along the back, and in a few sporadic places. So we're going to get something a little bit richer. That's pretty good a little bit richer and you see how we still got this light color here but it has that hint of the yellow so let's see let's go ahead and grab and again this would be when it'd be handy for me to actually head out my color swatch chart but i'm i'm living life on the edge here this is a pretty red color let's check out this brown next to it oh that's better i like that all right let's get more of this brown Definitely a reddish brown. And then what do I want to do to it? We're going to, what's this brown next to it? That's a darker reddish brown. That's not bad, but I want to warm this up just a little bit. So let's grab some of that ochre. Like I said, sometimes it just kind of, you just got to mix to get the right color that you want here. And there we go. That's nice. All right, let's make, let's make some more of that. That's why I can't really tell you like what colors I'm using per se, because what I mix and what you're going to mix is not going to be the same. But if we use the same reference photos, like I said, I'm just using kind of a general cheetah thing on, on Google, then you can go ahead and match up your pencil. All right. So we're going to thin it out a bit and we're going to kind of go easy. So let's see, we want to do the head, neck creases. So let's, let's start with the head. Okay, quite a bit of liquid in there, so we're gonna thin that out. But I want contrast too, so I don't wanna thin it too much. Let's see, it's gonna go down. Stab it in here, down across his face here. See, I feel like we could get even more. Let's just, let's just get a little bit of this red, almost pure pigment. Oh, I like that, okay. I'm gonna spread that out a little bit. Having this, with, with watercolors, it's really easy for things to look more pastel. Um, and I know I'm not super zoomed in, but we're kind of doing the whole, the whole thing here. But I also wanted you guys to be able to see uh, what colors I'm mixing. All right, let's grab this one. Go down and it looks like it's gonna go all the way down to above his shoulder. So now let's go ahead and spread that out. A lot of times when it comes to, now, I mean, we're not going hyper-realistic here by any means, but a lot of times when it comes down to whether you're trying to replicate uh, like the fur of an animal or, or you're trying to, you know, do the highlights of an apple or color eyes or whatever else, a lot of times it's easier to break down your reference images uh, in sections rather than looking at them as a whole. So like for instance, the one I'm looking at, when I Google just the word cheetah and pull up Google images, it's like the, the first and the fifth picture over. I think one's from Britannica, one's from Wikipedia. And those are the two ones that I'm looking at. And I'm saying, okay, I'm just gonna look at the head. What, what colors are we using here? What, is, what are the differences? And a big part of that is this kind of reddish brown. 
they both have that in common. So I'm kind of taking from both of those and doing my placement here. Now, of course you could do a search for a cheetah. I mean, there's plenty of running cheetah images. So you could do a search for like a running cheetah to see like light direction and all of that. But I'm kind of doing my own based on where I want it to be at. Oh, I'm so glad, Kim. Thank you, Leslie. So when we get this darkest color on here, then we'll go ahead and build up the other colors because now this area is too light. So we're gonna get a nice kind of warm brown as sort of our mid color and then we'll blend it down. Now, as far as on his back, we can do a little bit of this brown, but mostly this is kind of like at his joints and everything. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and add some of that here. Okay, dry our brush. Spread it out. I mean, cause you think cheetah, you just think, you know, either brown and black or yellow and black with spots, but there's a lot more to his different uh, legs and stuff. Hi, Sue. I heard about Palia, uh, Danielle. I haven't looked into it yet, but um, the gaming community I'm a part of has been talking about it. I just haven't looked into it, honestly, <laughs> because like, when I do have the time to game, I like uh, I like Minecraft. And so it's just like, do I really want to spread out the, the time that I have to another game? I'll look at it though. I don't really know the premise of it. It seems, if I remember correctly, it seems like kind of a cute, kind of cozy game. But yeah, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of chatter about it. Okay, so now I'm just spreading that out here. Definitely going to add uh, more mid colors. And see, the funny thing is, is even though we're using this kind of reddish brown, because there was so much umber there, that's what it's looking more like, rather than the um, kind of orangey light color that we used on the head. Okay, so we're gonna get a little bit here, going I'm gonna go around these lanterns. I'm trying to make a conscious effort not to paint over the lanterns. Okay. Thank you for that, Kenny. All right, let's use there, there, grab some more of that ochre. See, it's really easy to go through all of these colors, so mixing up a fair amount of pigment is helpful. Let's see, that's a little bit more red than the previous one, but it's all right, it doesn't all have to be exactly the same. Hi, Susan, how are you? I was lurking in your stream earlier this week. Well, I think I chatted a little bit in that. I don't know, I'm such a lurker for so many streams these days. Like I'm doing all different kinds of things so I can't always like chat, but I'm like, I'm there. I'm just sort of hanging out. Okay. Yeah, I like that kind of rich, rich brown. We need to get some on these front legs though. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Sounds good, Renee. Have a great rest of your day. Okay, let's see. Let's add a little bit more of this on the paw. Definitely want to add a little bit more shadow underneath, but I want to get our mid kind of transition color going as well. So we've got a lot of this kind of rich brown. Now I want to add a little bit more and it's going to be a bit more, I don't know, some of the pictures it's a bit more yellowish. We're going to, we're just going to make our own color. With that. So let's get some of this color. I'll zoom out while we mix colors. You know what I need to do on days that I'm doing watercolor painting like this, I need to set up this camera so that it's pointing just directly at the paint. That's what I need to do. Lower the trim. Now I'm like wondering if I, no, I'll set it up for next time. I'll set it up for next time. Next time I will, I will work on uh, positioning the camera so you guys can see what I'm mixing. Cause I think that will be handy. Let's get a little bit of that umber. Yeah, I like that color. <laughs> definitely chocolate and definitely chocolate. Uh, thanks, Christopher. All right, so we're gonna water this down. Cause like I said, we can always go back and add more. Let's go ahead and zoom on in just a bit. Okay. 
We have quite a bit of pigment on the brush, but we're gonna roll with it. Let's see how bright it gets. It's pretty wet. Going over the lanterns again. Why do I do that? But they're just all over the place. It's all right, when we add their colors on, it will work. Always chocolate, right? I am down with that. a little bit here and let's do the neck we're gonna blend on into the lighter colors that we did earlier we have that little bit of a lighter color here and then I think we'll add once we have all of our colors on here we're gonna add just a few more contrasting <clears throat> not highlights per se, but more like low lights because we're going to do some darker color. Let's see. Ah, thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, um, this is me willing fall to, uh, <laughs> to arrive. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's going to be 106 here this week. 106. I was playing around with my uh, weather app and I was just kind of, you know, I was looking at the temperature thing all across different parts of the world. There are two other places in the world that are hotter than, than Texas right now. Anybody have uh, any guesses as to the two other hot places in the world right now, aside from Texas? Ah, <laughs> uh, thanks, Cece. Ooh, hamburgers, Ev, I love it. I'll give you a hint. One's in the US and one is not. <laughs> Try that. Smooth it out just a bit. I want to get that nice rich color. California? Surprisingly, no. I know, right, Leslie? Okay, um, Death Valley. Yeah, okay, Death Valley probably is. Um, but the two I was thinking of was Phoenix, Arizona, and the Sahara Desert. <laughs> I mean, granted, yep, yep, Christian, Arizona and Africa. Yup. It's kind of ridiculous. Like I had, since the kids are starting school, um, I was talking to the kiddo teacher and I was like, you know, what does this mean for recess? Obviously, ooh, the paper's starting to, I gotta be gentle with that. I was like, you know, obviously with it being this hot, like it's not that it's raining, there's not a thunderstorm, but there is still plenty of danger for them going out anyway. Uh, thankfully, the teacher is on the same page and the children will not be doing outside recess uh, at least this week because of the heat. Like literally, it's supposed to be 106. Anyway, uh, so the other day I put on like my kind of slightly more brown toned blush. I had a brown shirt on. I did my nails in the brown. I'm just like, if I do enough brown, maybe fall will come. <laughs> Yeah, or the Sahara, yep. Mojave Desert, Death Valley, yep. Aw, uh, 90, I'm not 90. Yeah, 106 here, it's kinda ridiculous. And by kinda, I mean a lot ridiculous. All right, so we're gonna finish drying this real quick. We're gonna add a little bit of that color to the lace, because I missed that. And then we're gonna add our finishing touches on our Mr. Cheetah here. When little Emily was younger, cheetahs were her favorite. Arizona, yeah. Apparently 78, oh my gosh. Yeah, 116 is crazy. Uh, like things are literally melting in Arizona. A few years ago when it was really hot again, like I had a friend who lived down there. She sent me this picture of somebody's trash can that melted. I'm at a cold snap, low 90s, oh my gosh. Yeah, a trash can that melted, people with like plastic fences, it's melting, it's like, this can, this is not normal. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab our number eight again. Let's add a little bit of this yellow to the legs. Well, that lantern has just completely disappeared in his leg, hasn't it? Oh, well, like I said, I am just, I am willing, I am willing fall to come be like, it's okay, fall. I know everybody's trying to do, you know, spooky, scary skeletons in August, but honestly, 
I wouldn't be mad if it was Halloween. <laughs> or at least it's still hot during Halloween here, but it's not like unbearable. Like, do you think if I just start, you know, sitting, sitting outside going spooky, scary skeletons that like the weather will get the hint and it'll just be, I think that's why a lot of us try and do, you know, cause I guess the, the pumpkin flavors are releasing this week or something like that. I'm like, I think that's why we all jump the gun in fall because we're so anxious to just, just get out of this heat. <laughs> Oh, no, I love overcast days. Oh my gosh, overcast days, rainy days. Those those are my happy place, absolutely. One job I had sent the checks via plane and it came from Phoenix and the tires were melting and the plane couldn't take off. Oh my gosh. Oh, fun, Danielle. Yeah, so I am, uh, I am over this heat. The nice thing I like about the blue on the background is that because there's a slight orange to the cheetah, um, it's you've got some complimentary colors going on. They say August 1st is the first day of spooky season. I hope so. I mean, I suppose we're not doing Christmas in October, but I'm telling you, November 1st hits and it's just like, ho, 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 man. Ho, 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 goodbye, everything else. <laughs> ho, ho, ho for Santa. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, so let's do our last little bit of kind of contrasting details. We're gonna use that burnt umber again, but we're gonna get it. Actually, we'll just snag some of this kind of darker color we used before. Now, as much as I want to fill that brush, I don't wanna to go too heavy, but I do want it more pigment than water, so. It's not necessarily wishing our life away so much as like, I just don't want to be this hot anymore. <laughs> no, if we could just like, here, here's the thing. I want to, I want to just mush the seasons together. Okay. So we just, there, we don't do summer anymore. And we just do like, there's spring and then fall. And then there's sprawl. I want winter, spring, sprawl, fall. Can we do that? <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry, Ev. I hope you feel better soon. Well, yeah, that would make sense because I mean, you make, you know, it got, it's basically wax, right? Well, no, it's not wax to begin with, but I mean, you can make these wax candles, so it's got it's got the right starting properties. So I don't know who who's on board for sprawl. I'll I'll keep the three months in between. I just you know want to be able to go outside. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was at Hobby Lobby yesterday. Speaking of which, I got some more yarn so I can finally make that Totoro. But, um, oh, and Hobby Lobby has the orchid and um, amethyst pencils in. Uh, but yeah, I was at Hobby Lobby and it's like Christmas. And I'm like, what? <laughs> well, if you guys are gonna put the Christmas decorations out, then at the very least, at the very least, we could, um, you know, have the weather to match. That's all I'm saying. I just want a little bit of sprawl. Although I know sprawl is already a word, but we'll just spell it differently. It'll work. Right? Sprawl. Sounds good to me. I'm done with it. Okay. A little bit more and then I think we'll do one more little bit of mid color just to make sure that he's got a nice kind of rich color to him a little bit on his cheeks there I like that all right so let's grab a little bit of this color here a little bit of this one a little red oh I love Totoro Totoro was awesome. But yeah, I found a crochet pattern uh, on Etsy for Totoro and I got the uh, yarn to do it yesterday. So um, the, the pattern is a more complicated pattern than I've done before. So it's probably going to take me a while to get through it. But the nice thing is, is this person um, that I got it from, they have unlisted, for those that purchase the patterns, uh, they have unlisted YouTube videos that if you get stuck, you can go ahead and watch them. And I was like, oh, that's 
handy. Because sometimes I just need to visually see, you know, where you just slow it down, like, second by second, be like, okay, so that string goes in front of that one, and that one goes behind that one. <laughs> it's like a puzzle half the time. Okay, let's do just a little bit. Ah, thanks, Annette. A little bit here, we'll get some of that rich color. Trying to remember to go around the lanterns. <laughs> okay, uh, how are we feeling about the color on him? Actually, you know all it is. We just need to move somewhere that's got a more friendly climate. That's all. We were, uh, you know, in the evenings we can go outside and we were moving things around the, the yard and the garden and everything. And I was moving some bricks, uncovered a little toad that was hanging out back there. I'm like, the heck? And he's like, go away, I'm sleeping. I'm like, oh, okay, Mr. Toad, you can have the brick. I just imagine like, come to you, okay? Oh my gosh, Annette, my, my dream someday is to be in a position where I can get like a summer home in the UK. Like that would be amazing. Come to the UK for the summer. Heck yes. Spending in Scotland would be amazing. Anything before Halloween is too early to bring out Christmas decorations. There you go. All right, just a little bit more on the feet. Well, maybe if I just start like coming up with sprawl holidays, it'll just, it'll, it'll, you know, take off. Next thing you know, next year, sprawl's a thing. I'm down with that. So I'm really just being kind of fast and loose with all of this. But for me, it's really the only way that I can finish Kirby pages. Like, cause I have a few Kirby pages that are unfinished. Like, I think I actually have one in here. Yeah, there we go. I started it with pencil and I just haven't finished it. But I bet you that if I had done this with watercolor, it would, it would be done. <laughs> All right, let's try this real quick. How are you on time? 11.09. Uh, let's see, what can you say? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Halloween thing. I like to wait until after Thanksgiving before seeing Christmas stuff out. Oh, you're not in Scotland, though. Wait, Annette, were you? No, no, you weren't the one in Canada. But, like, if we did the UK, then I could travel to Scotland and do, like, the whole, the whole thing. It's so funny, because when I went to visit um, Johanna in Aberdeen, we also took a, my, my mom was with me. We took three hours and we went to um, it was Dune, Dune Castle where uh, Game of Thrones and Outlander were filmed. And we're like, yeah, it's a great day trip. And like, like everywhere there because, I don't know, I live in Texas. If you don't travel like at least three hours to somewhere, you're not getting anywhere. <laughs> then you have the Thomas Velvet Comet. I was just wondering if I can use watercolor in them since they're double-sided. Um, I do not, like Kenny said, um, but these are double-sided too. I just sacrifice the page behind it. Currently have six Kirby books and each one of them have one whip in them. So is the background to still be down, right, Allison? Oh my gosh, let's not even talk about how many whips I've got. It's, it's, it's like a way of life now. <laughs> it's less harsh, okay. See, I, I love the, I don't know how it would work over pencil. That's the thing is, I don't know how the, I, I feel like the watercolor would just bead on top of it. Okay, so the cheetah is done for now. When we go back with pencils, we're gonna be adding a little bit to it. Intense in one of those books? Ooh, there you go. I actually really like like the rainy, cold weather. Um, when I went there, it was spring break and Scotland actually got snow. Like I was like, hello? snow in March. Okay. I like it. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and let's zoom in for a second. Mm -hmm. Trying to make room with the water here. 
Yeah, exactly. Like you just, you, you just take big trips. Okay. Before we get started with the um, lantern. So the gold that I did on the outside of this lantern, it's this here. It's the uh, Sakura pen touch gold. It is the 0.7 millimeter extra fine point um, pen. It shakes. You can hear it, which tells you a little bit about the fluid that's on the inside. It does have a little bit of a scent. So if you are highly sensitive to smells, I would avoid it. Um, so like I said, if you are looking at like the, the prompt that I put in Google was just lanterns in the sky. If you go to Google and type in lanterns in the sky, then you will see just how it's not just like one big bright lantern. And in fact, what I want to do now to kind of match up with them a little bit more is I want to add just a little bit more darkness to the top. So we're going to go ahead and grab some of this umber here. I don't know. I can move it over here so you guys can see it. I'm trying to position things a little bit easier. I got, oh, I got my messy palette here, but you know, is it really a paint palette if it's not messy? All right, so let's get some of that umber. Let's get a little bit of this kind of reddish brown. Yeah, I like that. Now we're gonna go light because I don't wanna go super dark right away. So we're gonna add a fair amount of, how to cold summer due to the jet stream. Oh, oh thanks Allison, yeah. Um, let's see, so the colors for these nails are, Amber, it's one of the magnetic nail polishes from my LNP. And then the ring finger is abundance with a coat of the amber on top of it. But yeah, I was like, fall oh, colors. <laughs> okay, so this one's already done. We did it last time. So if you want to go back and see how you did it, we did it, you can. But I'm going to add in, I think we can get a little bit more of that amber. This kind of darkness on top. Again, we're just using the little, what is this? This is a number one round. But I just want to put this little bit of contrasting dark on top. And again, to kind of smooth the edge of that, you just kind of dab, dab your brush on, uh, on your towel or your paper towel or whatever you're using so that you can kind of Spread that around a little bit. Now, I mean, obviously it's a pretty tiny brush, so it can't hold a ton of water. So if you need more water, go ahead and grab a slightly larger brush, but because it's so small, I wanted to make sure and get something pretty detailed. And then remember, it's going to, uh, it's going to dry lighter than it looks. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's about right. And I think it's if you go from, from uh, you know, west to east. But usually when we go over to, like, eastern Oregon, we would go, gosh, how did we go? We had to go up the coast a ways. But, yeah, eight hours sounds about right for, uh, for Oregon. All right, there we go. So I got that little bit of darkness. So let's go ahead and do a few more of these lanterns. So we're gonna grab the uh, number eight round. We're gonna clean this real good. Okay, clean that off because we're gonna be doing a lighter color. And we are going to start with, you know, I got my, my paint palette is a little well loved. So, you know, it's got some colors in it, but that's why we use the palette here to kind of, mix out any other color contamination that we might have. Okay, so we're gonna take this real kind of bright yellow and we are gonna do a um, kind of a base coat, ooh, zoom back out, of all of these lanterns. So we're gonna turn that side up. We're gonna come over here so we can see it and we're gonna go ahead and layer this, uh, this yellow on. So we'll just start here, okay. That's why I wasn't too upset about getting some of the cheetah color on there because I knew we were going to be doing at least a base coat of yellow on all of these. And I'm just using the lightest yellow color. If you're using watercolor pencils or two watercolors, just choose a nice light kind of bright yellow because this is going to be our brightest color on the lantern. A little bit more. And the nice thing is, is when we're done, if we use something like Prismacolors, because it's such a waxy pencil, 
if we want to fix some of the areas that maybe bled over from the cheetah, um, the way that it layers on top, we'll be able to do that. Okay. Now I'm working left to right because I am right-handed. If you are left-handed, you probably want to work from the opposite way. Um, the watercolor isn't going to drag too much, but you will lessen the risk of accidentally smearing. Let's see, that was really yellow. Really yellow. Uh, accidentally smearing the paint if you can keep your hand not, you know, not on the wet part. Now I'm using this brush instead of the teeny tiny one because I want to be able to hold a bit more pigment in the brush. Not a ton. But you're going to kind of get a visualization of how this is going to look after we have all the yellow done. You're right, Hannah. Since I've discovered watercolor painting, I've been doing more Kirby books paper because... Yes, exactly. I agree, uh, Deb. That's been the same with me. Like, as long as I'm drying in between... Like, obviously, it's still paper and it does break down eventually, but it's really good paper. And so, yeah, I, I rarely use just pencils in Kirby books in the main classroom. A lot of water. Cause it, it holds up pretty well. Like it's an, it's impressive. It does a good job. So we're just going to get this yellow and all of these lanterns. We got a little bit of a glare from the light. So um, when we get closer to being done or even when it's done, I'll get a picture of the whole thing and it will look look much better without the light glare. And like I said, when we're completely done too, if I want the edges to be darker, what we'll probably do is we'll go in with um, like a, a stiffer brush and we're gonna add, we're gonna add pastel to the background to help it, uh, help the contrast of the night sky pop just a little bit more. And we're gonna be doing some stars on the moon and everything as well. Live stream on this page, you pointed out a demarcation line between the black and blue that you didn't like. How did you fix it? So it looked a little bit better um, after it dried and there is still a little bit of a difference here, but what I ended up doing, because I realized the issue was, the reason why it was so different between the black and the blue, and like I said, there is still a little bit, but the difference was um, the blacks that I was using was a very warm black and then we've got the blue. So what I did is after I got the black to where I wanted, I actually took a light wash of the indigo and I went over the black to add that coolness to it. Ooh, homemade bread, love it. Bread or cookies, perfect. Hi, bread lady. Um, but yeah, so it's still not super cool, but it's it's a much cooler black than it was. So yeah, a big part of that was I had two very different temperature, um, very different temperature colors. And then honestly, uh, after, since this had dried completely, I went ahead and added a few more, a few more light layers to it. But yeah, I definitely had to go slower, but I think the big thing was just that I put the blue over the top. That helped with the consistent blend um, across the two colors and it helped to make them both the right tone. So when you're blending colors, sometimes you just have to put them all on top of each other and hope for the best. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna finish putting the yellow on all of these. But that was a good question. Thank you for asking. I actually meant to tell you guys that, and then I was spaced. I was like, well, as I was doing it last time, I was like, oh, I need to make sure I tell them the changes that I made. And it was just that I layered it over the top. Hey, my so my answer for the question today is chicken Caesar salad from Domino's. Ooh, I had real bacon bits and sweated mozzarella. Oh, that sounds delicious. I love that. Whenever we do uh, baked potatoes, I always cook up some bacon so we can have real bacon bits with it. Totally worth it. Okay, we almost got all these lanterns. And I went ahead and filled in the sky behind the birdcage because I was like, well, the birdcage is see-through, it's not a lantern. Maybe we'll add like some silver on it or something. Because I do have a silver one of those uh, pens, like the gold one I just used. Let's see, are we all in frame? Could probably slide it down a bit. There we go. That's better. Yeah, now all the lanterns are in frame. <laughs> Help if I'd done that in the first place. All right, almost got 
all the lanterns. I'm going to get some more yellow for this big one up here that's in the corner. <laughs> See, I don't ever worry about butter too much. I mean, in the big scheme of things, I don't think butter is going to be... For me, it's the sugar that I have to watch. I mean, I don't... Um, you know, obviously, some sugars are triggering for my headaches anyway, but I... Uh, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, I try not to eat, eat a ton of it, but I do have a weakness for it. Okay, did I miss any lanterns? Do you guys see? Oh, this one right here. I think I got all of them. We might, what do I want to do with the moon? Let's add just a little bit of yellow to the moon also. I'll probably end up doing some, uh, some gray on it, but we'll add a little bit. Oh, awesome, Kim. Thanks. All right, so let's dry our little la yellow lanterns here. Thank you. I love it though. Oh, I did miss one up here in the corner. I love it though that you guys, like a lot of you are going for savory and I'm like, can I, can I just have a bunch of cake? Like that would be fantastic. <laughs> I suppose I'd get tired of it eventually, but. I also like those um, Little Debbie cupcakes that have like the, yeah, cake is awesome. <laughs> Hi, V. Uh, the Little Debbie cakes that have, that are like chocolate cake with the little, you know, the chocolate icing and then the white filling in the middle. That's basically like a chocolate Twinkie. Uh, but I used to like to freeze those. I don't know. I like eating cold. Same thing with uh, like Swiss rolls because I like to eat all the chocolate off the outside and then eat the Swiss roll. <laughs> Right, Anna? No, I'm done with that. I want a big potato with lots of butter and sour cream. So here you go. Right, Annette? Oh, that reminds me. I still haven't made that carrot cake for Little Seed. You know, I should make that today, and then we can eat it today and tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so we have our base coat for our lanterns all down. Um, let's see. Let's, let's actually work, since we did this one already, let's work on some of them up here, and we can get a good chunk of these smaller ones done. So... The smaller ones, obviously, this is going to be different than how we did the large one. Because with the large one, we had a lot more space where we could add more details. So we're going to need to, you know, re rechange how we do this. So if you look at, again, I'm looking at my Lanterns in the Sky um, images on Google. The smaller ones don't have nearly as much detail. In fact, some of them just look yellow. But I want to make sure that we add some of that kind of glowy orange brown to it so for these smaller ones we're definitely going to be using our number one round because it's super teeny tiny just like these are make sure we're in focus and let's turn up the brightness just a bit there we go all right and for the colors that we're going to use now i don't remember exactly what colors that we used on the bottom one but we'll zoom out for a second while i choose so we're definitely going to be using like this one and probably this one Basically just a mix of that kind of like yellow brown. So we'll zoom back in now. And let's start, let's start with our darker color. And again, we're gonna wanna move quickly because we don't want a lot of harsh brown lines. So we're gonna wanna blend that out, but we don't have a ton of space. So I'm gonna grab kind of this reddish, reddish brown. Is that too dark? No, I think that'll be okay. All right, so it's just a reddish brown. I have a little bit on my palette over here. But we are gonna start by just, see, can you guys see, can I zoom in any? Yep, that's as close as I can get. All right, so the top part is where we're gonna put our brown, okay? So we're just going to use a little bit, oops, it went out of the line a little bit. Use a little bit of our brown, and we don't actually need to blend it too much, not too much. And again, this is just really tiny. So if you have a detail brush, that's what you're gonna wanna be using. And in fact, we need to make sure we're working left to right here. So see, that's way too much right there. Okay. So we're just doing this brown at the top. And we got this little sneaky one here that's on the cheetah. No. And like I said, for these ones where I accidentally went over it on the cheetah, we may use like a Prismacolor uh, yellow to get that bright glow to it. Okay, a little bit there. Just 
little lanterns actually shouldn't take us that long. It's just that there's a lot of them. And you could do it all flat one color. This is just the way that I wanted to be able to add some dimension to them was by adding the darker color on top. And then we will add another yellow underneath. So let's do this one. This one's a little bit bigger, but it's pretty close. Also small enough that we'll just do the little ones. Okay. So tiny detail brush is going to be your best friend. I use this brush a lot when I was going in between, uh, in between the people. Okay. Now, if I was filming this, this is where I would um, speed up the video so you don't have to see me do every single lander, but you guys get it live, which means you get to see me do all the little bitty brown parts. <laughs> Here we go. But yeah, things are, things are gonna change up a little bit, not on the channel, but just here with the kids going back to school and everything. I was thinking what I might end up doing because my schedule, because of the kids' schedule, obviously I don't give too much detail about where the kids are going to school, but let's just say our pick up and drop off routine is going to be changing, which means my schedule might be a little bit different, not for you guys, but what it means is that I was thinking I need to write down like who, who all streams like early in the, well, not early, early, but you know, in the mornings, um, you know, like nine o'clock or whatever else. But there, I think with this new school schedule, I think it might open up the opportunity for more uh, impromptu streams, just because um, the way everything's gonna be laid out, I am gonna be wide awake super early in the morning. Now, obviously I know a lot of my mods especially are on the uh, West Coast. So, uh, you know. Show only if you if you feel like I don't even know when I'll do them, but it'd be like that. I have a feeling I might have more instances where the mood takes me, and I'm just like, you know what, we're going live, and I'll just like go live at nine o'clock, <laughs> as long as I'm not overlapping anyone. But uh, yeah, I think there may be more opportunities. Sounds good, Dominique. Thanks for being here. Okay, a little bit of water here. We're getting all that all that brown on here. I think it really just kind of brings it to life a little bit. Now this one's a little bit bigger, so I want to smooth out this brown just a smidge. So I just clean my brush and I'm just kind of making the edge of that brown a little fuzzy. Okay. Now that's pretty brown, so we're gonna there we go. Thin that out just a little bit. I don't know, Angela, you're getting pretty good at memorizing who's who. I'll just have to uh, put yours and Shannon's brains together and be like, all right, I need I need a working schedule here of who who does what when. Because <laughs> I like the idea of doing impromptus. I just don't want to overlap anyone that I am not aware of. I think I'm following a few people in the community. And I know that Connie is on her vacation right now, so sh her streams are temporarily holding off, which I'm so excited for her. That's gotta be such a fun trip. Okay. We're not gonna do all of these. After I get up to this line, we're gonna go get, we're gonna do our second color here. Obviously, I don't want you guys to have to sit through doing all of these. If you want to see how we did the larger ones, then you can go back and watch the uh, live stream from uh, Friday, which is when we did. We did this larger lantern at the bottom uh, near the end of stream. So if you if you want to go there just for that, uh, you can slide slide that bar over till the end and you'll be able to see it there. Okay. Almost done with these ones. Okay. One more. Okay, so that is, that is all the brown on the little ones. Now let's take a look at, we'll probably use the number eight now. 
Oh, a list. Um, a list for all of the uh, people that stream. Yeah, Angela, if you want to, like, share that with me, I would not be opposed. Because <laughs> I cannot keep track for the life of me. And, I mean, I have a hard enough time remembering, like, did I put on deodorant today? I don't know. <laughs> do the smell test. Gross. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to do this one right here. So there's the really light yellow, and then there's this one that's sitting next to it. Again, I don't have names for it. I'm just choosing a nice bright yellow and running with it. Okay, so now over that brown, quite a bit of water, but over the brown, we're gonna add this yellow. Okay, not all of it. I wanna leave some of that, um, some of that light yellow. And remember, it is going to dry lighter than you realize. So we're going to, and because these paints kind of reactivate a little bit, it helps you to kind of smooth the blend edge, blend edge of those browns. And then for these larger ones, we're probably going to add a little bit more brown after we add the yellow. But you can see how they're starting to kind of pop from the sky. And then we're also going to use the, <laughs> Kenny. We're also going to use the uh, gold pen on these as well. Okay. You see how that's kind of softening the brown just a little bit, but we're still getting that kind of high, high contrast of the brown on the top of them. Okay. Because it's so small, you think it wouldn't take very long, but when there's a bunch of them, it can sometimes take a little bit longer. Okay. Make sure we get all of them. Then we're gonna dry it and we're gonna use, I think a tad more brown and then we'll use the gold pen. And in fact, what we could do is add some more gold like dots in the distance to represent like more, uh, more lanterns. Absolutely. It's nice because like in the discord, I have a, um, you know, people can mark when they're going live. So usually you can always check that, but yeah, it's hard to keep up sometimes. Okay. We're going to use a little bit of this ochre now. Okay. And for some of these, you know, I'm going to use the small one. For some of these larger ones, we'll probably put a little bit more in it than usual. There we go. Yeah, I'm liking how this is looking. Okay. There we go. Kind of bringing them to life a little bit here. Just using that ochre. And reconnect. All right, OBS is just, OBS is just being weird. If it's still glitchy, just go ahead and refresh. OBS just likes to disconnect in the middle of streams because, you know, it's OBS. <laughs> okay, all right. So I'm happy with those. Let's go ahead and dry them. It's so funny like that it disconnects because like I don't even have any like drop frames or anything. Like, okay then. Now hopefully I can draw my lines a little bit straighter today than I did when we streamed this last time. <laughs> See, that's already dry. That really wasn't that much. Okay, so now we're gonna grab our paint pen here. Like I said, this is the Sakura Pen Touch uh, Gold 0 0.7 millimeter pen. They come in different colors. There's white, there's silver, there's gold, there's copper. We have copper too. Um, it's got a, hang on. It's got like an activation thing like regular paint pens do. And then it comes out this real nice kind of gold. So, like I said, though, if you're sensitive to smells, 
uh, this does have a little bit of a scent to it. So I'm just going to carefully go around. Oh, awesome, Kim. Yeah, I love it. The only, like I said, the only thing I ever say about it is just the smell, but it has to do with the um, paint mixture that they use in it. It works better, I think, for the larger ones, but if you go slowly, and obviously you don't want to press too hard because if you press down on that plunger, you're going to end up with a big old, big old dollop of gold on your page. And if after you use your gold, you're like, oh man, that wasn't, that didn't quite, like it covered up some of your darker colors, like I did on the larger lantern, you can always go back and add uh, a darker one. No, nah, Kim, it was, I, I, uh, I disconnected for a minute. I disconnected for a minute. So I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's just, just you. That was on my end. OBS was being, was being super fun. No. Paper's kind of curved here. Now, obviously because this has a scent to it, it makes me think that like maybe it's alcohol based or something. So you know, if you're going to go ahead and iron your watercolor page afterwards and use this, you know, do it with care. I, I did it earlier with this uh, where I had the pen already and I didn't have any issues, but just something to be aware of. You don't want to, whenever you do iron it, you iron it on a real low setting. And, uh, sorry, drawing lines, uh, a real low setting and I always use a page in between. So here in a minute, we'll go ahead. Well, I don't know. I may I may wait to iron this because I want this ink to dry completely. Before I add additional heat to it. But I feel like it's really nice because it's not like a super bright gold. It's just enough to kind of help with the glow of the lanterns. <laughs> right where I like list please it's so hard to keep track I mostly you know I make sure that my notifications are on and I mostly rely on my notifications for when everybody goes off uh yeah so this one is just Chandler tools I got this one on Amazon And it's worked pretty well. In fact, it can get very hot. <laughs> but that's a good thing. It's a heat gun, right? <laughs> well, and it's hard too, because when you subscribe to someone, like YouTube doesn't automatically put it on all notifications. Like, why do they even have a difference? Like, you're like, yes, I want to follow this person, but I only want to follow them some of the time. So please only tell me occasionally when they post something. It's like, no, if you follow someone, like, and like, I want to know, I want to know when they're doing stuff, not just like only when they're kind of doing stuff. <laughs> Hi, Shannon. Uh, well, see, I've got that list of streamers on my website, but there's not any times on it. Maybe I should just, I like, I feel like we could do like an open like Google Docs spreadsheet, but I don't know how I would keep, you know, like, I don't know. What if someone has like a grudge against someone for whatever reason and they like change their time on there? I don't know. But like an open workable Google Doc for you, doc for you to add in your times. Like I feel like, okay, I am loving this gold with like the cluster of all these small ones. Like, yeah. I don't know that I'll do gold dots. What I think I'll do is when we get closer to being done and I'm ready to do the finishing touches, I'll add extra like white paint pen stars behind them. I think that would work nice. Because I mean, the people releasing lanterns are all supposedly on the cheetah's backs and whatever we want down from. It's not like there's a ton in the sky. Or maybe I could just have everybody send me their stream times and then put it on an open Google Doc that like can't be edited. 
Oh, Shannon, I'm so sorry. I <laughs> know. Maybe it is a net antibiotic. Oh, it's, a, it's a thing. I'm so sorry. Is it making your heart race? We realized that part of the reason that Steve's heart was kind of going a little wonky was because of the uh, inhaler. Forgot that one of the side effects of the inhaler is an increased heart rate, which makes sense because when I've used like nebulizers before, it makes me all shaky and heart rate go up too. Okay, I got this one here. I know I'm kind of covering it, but it's because I'm trying to fix the bendy portion of the page. There we go. Okay. Let's zoom out just a little bit. Uh, see, that's so pretty. Now, it looks not quite as pretty for you guys because you're getting that light glare. But let's see if I can. I don't know. I think it looks nice. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Not made for modern medicine. Just gotta sleep through it. Now, let's see, what do we wanna do? I'm gonna see if I can find, let's see. Let's Google cheetah at night. Cheetah at night. Maybe there will be a moon in the picture. Oh, they're more like, <laughs> like night vision. But it looks like the, the moon's all kind of like yellowish. So we can do kind of a yellowish gray. And when we come in with our pencils, we can add a little bit of a glow on the outside. But let's do, let's see. How do I wanna do this? Let's go ahead and bring in some of that yellow. Ah, uh, thanks. So we're just gonna use a little bit of yellow on the moon, okay? But then also, let's use some kind of like blue gray. So we have a little bit of black. Oh, you know, we could just take some of this indigo and some of this black that's next to each other over here on the side. I know you can't really see it. It's like black and indigo that was left over from the sky. So it's all just kind of, you know, whatever colors. I can't tell you exactly how much of each is in there, but I'm mixing leftovers on the palette, so it works. So let's do a little bit of that there. And this stuff is actually already dry, so that's nice. Let's get a little bit of black. After one dose, what? You can totally get side effects after one dose. <sighs> I mean, I know I didn't go to med medical school or anything, but sometimes you gotta shake your head. Like, really? Really? Okay, then. Here, see? Just something simple like that. And we could do... I don't think I'm going to do a silver on the outside. I think I'm going to wait till we add the extra. Let's see. Do I want to do... I'm trying to think the order that I want to do this. I think we'll finish all of the watercolor. Then we'll do our pencil, which will include probably a glow. Then we'll do the paint pen and then, you know, pastel on top of that. If that's what we want to do. We're gonna dry that. Now, do you guys wanna see how I iron the page? Again, I learned that technique from, um, from Barbara. I'm gonna get the iron plugged in here. I just keep it on a real low setting, like on a one or a two, depending on how powerful your iron is. And I just have a standard Black & Decker uh, iron. It does have water in it, but I have the steam, uh, the steam turned off. I don't really want, oh goodness, um, I don't really want all that extra water on there. And then I have an extra sheet of paper here that I used last night. So we're gonna wait for that to heat up. Um, but we'll probably do one more stream with this where um, I might do some of this grass uh, offline. That way we can finish up with the painting and still have time. Um, you know, we'll do some of the grass, like probably this corner or something. And then uh, we'll finish up the painting and do the pencil and the pastel. And I think that should be able to finish up uh, this page for Friday. Right? Yes. The salt technique is fun. Right, Natalie? I had never thought of it, like, at all. I was like, what? Okay, like I said, I just have mine on, like, a two or what? I guess it would help if you guys can see it. 
like I said, it's just a Black & Decker brand uh, iron. I just keep it like, this is like between one and two. Uh, make sure, you know, there's no steam or we're not gonna spray it or anything. It's just, uh, just the straight up heat, okay? So I'm gonna move the water a little bit. I feel like that's getting pretty warm. So what I'm gonna do, it's not super wrinkly. The moon's still a little bit wet, but it's okay, this will dry it. So now what I'm gonna do, anywhere that I'm gonna use the iron, I need to have the paper over the top because I can't guarantee that it's not gonna react with like the ink here. I don't wanna burn anything, obviously, which is why you have it real low. Then you just make sure you don't iron past where the paper is. If you have a larger piece of paper, you can feel free to do it like that. Or you could even fold over the other side, I suppose. But I didn't do that because I didn't want to worry about any ink transfer on accident. So I'm just using the sheet of paper. I'm not sitting too long in any one spot. And it's not going to be perfect, but it is going to uh, smooth that out. Like I said, I tested it out last night and I was like, Barbara is a flipping genius. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to do this. And it just does wonders for the crimping. You should, Kim. <laughs> I dry eyes people. I know, I'm using, using hazardous objects. And I am pressing because I'm trying to get it as flat as I can. Yeah, that cheetah is a lot more flat. And what I think I might do, because when it's still warm, the pages want to lift a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is as soon as I lift this up, I'm going to get those um, butterfly clips and I'm going to pinch it down. That might help help it keep its shape. So I've got one right here. There we go. Let's see, do I have any more of the big ones? I don't know where I put them. Let's see if this one will work. Maybe. I don't know where I put all my other ones. Okay, maybe not the whole book. There we go. Right, yeah, the corners always curl. But I mean, it does a pretty decent job of flattening everything. Especially when, you know, you're doing this in a book that is not meant to hold water. All right, I'm gonna unplug this iron because I will inevitably burn myself on it. I know me. <laughs> I'm gonna set it out of the way over here. There we go. But yeah, I'm liking that a lot. I'll let that, let that dry. And I don't know if you can see on the edge, but I mean, it did a pretty good job flattening it we're getting a lot of glare from the light but again I'll take a good picture of it when we're all done it's hard to get even coloring when you're you know streaming from top down um but it's 11 50 do you guys want to do a little bit of words on stream we'll probably just do one round because I am hungry and I want to go get some lunch so let's pull up our words on stream here yeah words on stream I love words on stream <laughs> yeah the words emo okay so let me go ahead and grab the link here we're gonna go to our games Put that in okay we'll turn let's see we're gonna pause the music oh i guess i never turned the music back on oh well all right let's go ahead and turn that up a little bit Okay, all right, is everybody ready? Let's go ahead and hit start. Oh, that's really loud, we're gonna turn that down. There you go, can you guys hear that okay? All right, so if you've never played this before, uh, it is a word jumble, you just type your answers in chat, and uh, there we go, Annette, nice. And it scores like Scrabble, so just put in what you can, it's super fun. C-I-N-E. I was like, I put my earbuds back in for this one. I was not wearing them this stream because my right ear decided to be all ringy. 
There we go. All right, so we got since scene, sign scene. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Oh, what about um, niece? Did I spell that right? I have a four e. There we go. Oh, nieces, nieces, n i e c e s. Oh, nieces. There we go. Woohoo! All right. Um, we've got one more five-letter word and two more four-letter words. Oh, there we go. Sign is nieces. Nice is a word? Or maybe signs? No, I guess it would start, oh, scenic, nice. It would start with an S because it's between scene and since. Um, what about sky? Hmm. What about hmm, sense? Let us see. <laughs> uh, since? sense huh I don't know what that last one is hmm. what about same same no I can't spell ah nice I knew it looked familiar all right skip three levels very nice Hmm. Uh, handball? Oh wait, you guys don't have it yet. I think it's handball. There we go, handball! Yeah, bald. And then we got hand and ball. Here we go. Um, bland, nice. Oh, ballad. B-A-L-L-A-D, ballad. Nice land. Okay, let's see. Uh, is there an A maybe? We got ball, bald. Um, Paul. Nice. Hmm. Hmm. Blah. There we go. I wonder if that other five-letter word is gonna start with an A. What about and all? I don't know if and all is word. I'm looking at my computer and I have those little notifications down on the bottom right. It's like weather. You know, it's like been an awesome summer when it's always like in the red. <laughs> Fire season, all that good stuff. Okay, so that other one is gonna start with an A. So, um, maybe why we could do like ably. Uh, what about a ball? Hmm. Gosh. What about a uh, hog? A hall? <laughs> I do like aha, but that's not quite right. Hmm. Banal. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what that last four letter word is. They like using medically correct words in this game, don't they? <laughs> All right, but it got to skip three levels, so we're good. All right, continue. All right, there is a fake letter in this one. Oh, feels like summer. Feels like summer. There it is. I still feel like I want um, fall, spring and fall, and then fall. Um. Okay. So yeah, muse. Um, let's see, what about rums, ruse? Oh, sure, yeah, you got sure. Or what about sewer, as in the one who sues? No? Oh, yes, okay. Hello. Hello. Any guesses? Yes, just. Justice, uh, the J is fake. Mm. Abuser, yeah. Got ruse, emus, muse, muser. We could try. One who muses. Yeah. Oh, muser is one. Nice. Mums, rems, ruse. Last one. We need another five-letter word. Rooms. Rooms. R-U-M-E-S. 
I don't know. <laughs> um, what about... Reuse. Reuse? The serum. Oh, there wouldn't have been two E's for oh, reuse. Oh, no, 13 words. <laughs> yeah. All right, continue. Oh, no. uh, there. Huh? There. There's not another E. I'm going to guess breath. Or, Bull. yeah, breath. No breath. Okay. Bear. What'd you say? Bear. Bear? B-E-A-R. -E Bear. It's the E. Hair. Okay. I'm gonna I'm feeling like the B is is pretty is a fake letter. So if the B is a fake letter, what about Parth. Parth? Oh. Oh no, oh, no that'd be another H. Oh, what about Earth? Rather nice. Okay, so yeah, it's a fake B. A fake B. That's a little sus. Uh, rear. <laughs> it, it, it took it. I was just about to say rather. You already got that. <laughs> uh, what Arg. about. Arg. Mm. Arg. <laughs> There's no G. But hey, we made our goal. Tear. Tear? Uh, already there. T E A R. Both of the tears. Both of the tears. No. We do rate. R A T E. Oh, there it is. You've got rate. Um, could be another T one. Uh, tray. The uh, or no, I guess it would be a T A if it's gonna be that. Right. That. <laughs> uh, if there was, that's three letters, but it'd be above that. Any guesses for the five letters? Lera. It's not a word. It does look like a word. It is not. Uh, Rhea. I always forget about that one. <laughs> I don't know what the last two five letter words are. Oh, we skipped two levels, right? I think so. No, yeah, skip three levels. What was the question of the day? Uh, if you could, you probably wouldn't like this one, but if you could eat as much of you as much of any food that you want without any consequences, what would it be? Uh, one little. The older little is in here. That's a lot of ends. Con... That'd be hilarious. What? Conspicuous. There's no S or P. Uh, canon. Okay, so that... And the A. It seems like the D. The D is... Oh, is it, uh, cinnamon? Yes, cinnamon! Okay, so it is a fake D and a hidden M. So, main... Cannon. <laughs> that he said cannon. Sneaky. <laughs> yeah, first day of school. Yeah, first day of school. Today's the last day of school. Uh, we got coin. What about dang? No, don't know. Sinna. 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 Um, we got cannon. Uh, maniac. That's a maniac. There would be another A for maniac. Um, hmm. Mm. Mm. Just a lot of mmms. Mm. <laughs> Uh, okay, Aiden. Manic, Micah. Oh my gosh, we haven't reached. Oh wait, we just need one more. Yeah. Cannon! Woohoo! Oh, that would make sense. Cannon, cannon, cannon. yes. Which cannon is which cannon? Which, so which cannon is, is like the fire of the cannon, and cannon is like a cannon event. It's, it's set in the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Eons. No. Nani. <laughs> Ciao, icon. Like it. Icon. Iconic. Please. Iconic. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next level, level fourteen. Oh. Nice. Sue at the top of the top of the chart. Uh, I'm gonna guess. Politics? Police. Not police, okay, Paul, Paul, 
No, that, that, that doesn't look right. We need too many T's for that one. Okay, so clip. Scholar. Scholar, you need an S A N R. Clop. Yeah, we're gonna make lunch as soon as we're done here. Clip clop, which means the H is fake. I was thinking police. Did I spell it wrong? Let's just try lice. <laughs> okay, so what about call it? Well. No, okay, coil. Um, there's no age. Police. Poly oh, it's a Y. Oh, policy. Policy. I can't type. Excuse you. Let's not burn on stream. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ploy. Yeah. Um. Boy, oily. Yeah, if the H wasn't fake. Also, pickup needs two C's and another U. No, pick off. <laughs> Angela's laughing. <laughs> Shannon said, "Good one." <laughs> uh, there you go. Um. Say poi. You're giving me a lot of three letter words. <laughs> but hey, we'll probably skip three levels on that one. <laughs> I skip three levels, we're good. Alright, Annette, number nine one in the pen. <laughs> um okay, potential S H simple real quick. Maybe it's an L. Um, it'll be fishy. Lip. In. Miles. Oh, oh, it is an L. But since simple didn't work, I'm gonna guess that it is a fake E. Yeah, cause I tried, yeah, I tried simple. So hidden L, fake E, smile, so if it's be another ash front. Fishy. Bill. Fishy. Himself. Yeah, that was not at all. Hey, himself. Oh no, it has to be five letters or less. Okay, what about so fake P, hidden L. Um smile. Oh, files? Did we get Oh no, we got that. Files, flies, shelf, limes, films. You guys are good. Oh, elfish. Flims. As in my word choices are flimsy. Um about Oh, Helms. Battle of Helms Deep. Woohoo! Alright, two more five letter words. Hey, it's your favorite one. Now, <laughs> no slime! He does not like slime. All right, skip three levels. Level 20. If you guys are here on Friday, we beat our goal and made it to level 28. I'm gonna guess that, let's try centered. Set. Centered. Or just centered. Shannon. Oh, Steve, Steve, concert. Okay, it's a hidden O. I love how, I love how, when it does this, it says, like, uh, Steve found a person. Mm-hmm. Sue got recent. Okay, so... Oh, is Sue it concrete? Concrete? Yes, yeah, concrete. concrete! Okay, so... Let's see, and Sue got center, yep. Alright, so concrete, so it's definitely a fake Z. Recent, hidden recent. O. recent. Unless somebody already got it. Uh, yeah, I think someone already got it. Um, let's see. Oh, Connie got crone. Nice. Probably good, but I I'm got typing fingers. Megan got tenor. Steve got got that one. Just don't worry about it. How did I leave for this round? You're fine. It's fine. 
Um, oh, yeah, they have their hair. We've got Court. Court? C O R T E? Is that a word? Um, what about Crete? Oh, gosh, we haven't met the goal yet. Uh, did we do Corner already? Corner. Oh, I needed two R's. That's right. Um, toner, yep. Yeah, co toner. Oh, yeah, we thought of the same thing. <laughs> we did good though. We made it to level twenty. No, I'm hungry, and you just said you were hungry. I need to feed you. <laughs> All right. All right. You want to say bye? Gotcha. <laughs> All right, like everyone. Thanks thing. for being like, here today. Like this. It is nice. You like cheetahs. Also, Ev, I hope children. you feel better soon. Um, I think they're just people. And well, look, there's some small ones. So that yeah, there's some children. Yes. Uh, let's see, Kara. Thank you again for your super chat. Yeah, right. It's always hard. All right, everyone. I'm gonna head out. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I will get caught up for next time, and we will be live again on Friday where we'll finish this page. Um. Paul so says yeah. Bye. Oh, hi, Paul. Paul says bye. Also, bye. Bye, <laughs> All right, everyone. I will chat with you later. Thank you so much for being here. Keep being awesome. And I will talk to you on Friday. Bye.